What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another episode of That's Just a Theory. I'm not gonna end that sentence just to annoy you out of spite. <laughs> Today, we are gonna be reacting to something I'm really excited to react to, and that is Underscore's new video. He hasn't uploaded in like, I think it's been two months, and I actually cannot wait to see what he thinks. Um, about all of this. This is apparently stuff about the Curse of Dreadbear DLC. Um, he's a little bit late, but <laughs> I'll let him have it. I'll let him have it. Um, hopefully he's he's really thought into this one. Uh, he, I, he usually does. He's usually very good with his theory videos. So I think we should just get straight into it really and start watching the video. So let's let's get straight into it. Nice little intro. <laughs> it's gonna say like, welcome to underscore. <laughs> welcome to underscore. You know, there's something I've been wondering about lately. What's the deal with Fallfest 83? You know Fallfest, that strange ring occurring event which was first mentioned in FNAF 6, had a prominent role in The Curse of Dreadbear, and may date all the way back to FNAF 4's DLC. Okay, so obviously before watching this video, I, I do have a few thoughts on this, and obviously The Curse of Dreadbear is a DLC in FNAF VR. But in the universe, I would also say that The Curse of Dreadbear DLC is a DLC in the VR game in FNAF VR. It's so mind-boggling and so hard to get your mind to kind of work with it. But I think that's actually how it works. I think it is just an extension to the VR game. Um, and so that means that it's still kind of like, um, you know, past events and stuff like that. It's not real. Um, it's just the Fazbear Entertainment um, creating the VR game and then it getting corrupted and stuff. About Fall Fest 83 though, I'm really interested to see what he's going to say about it because there aren't many explanations as to what it is. Uh, obviously, it's referencing um, the Bite of 83 um, and the events that happened in 1983, possibly stuff to do with FNAF 4. I know we have the like the bullies masks and stuff. Um, I, I really want to see what he says about this. So I think we should just carry on. Now, there's a couple things we know for certain about Fall Fest those being a majority of the FNAF 6 alleyway posters. These include the Freak Show Clown, the Man Wolf, the Spookfest advertisement, and the Circus Act. We know that these posters weren't just for decoration, since they showed back up in the Curse of Dreadbear. Right, right. The consensus on the Circus Act and Freak Show Clown posters is that they symbolize the Afton family and their fates. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that theory. Um, in the middle, on the screen, uh, you can really see the relations there, so uh, I'll just run it through with you. I'm, he might do this, um, but I don't care. Um, so we have William Afton, who's puppeteering Michael Afton. Um, so that's kind of, it's. you can see a lot of, of different um, ways to kind of see that. One reason is because Michael Afton kind of looks like his dad because he becomes a purple guy, a little bit like that. Also the fact that William Afton is kind of making Michael Afton's, um, Michael's life uh, <laughs> a pain. <laughs> He's kind of controlling Michael's life and Michael is trying to get his own freedom from his father and from all of the bad Fazbear Entertainment stuff. And then of course there's a clown and there's a bear with a party hat. Um, it's clear that that's Elizabeth and the crying child. Um, yeah, ho hopefully that's clear. Uh, he's probably gonna say all of this, but there you go. I'm assuming that this poster shows the Afton family how it was in 1983, with Michael and William still alive, but the crying child and Elizabeth having died by then. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. If this is true, then this may suggest Elizabeth's death having taken place in or before 1983, which I had already assumed to be the case due to Elizabeth's empty bedroom. That's a very good point, and, I, and one that's very um, like convoluted and stuff. But although he's twisting a lot of, um, parts of parts of this to get to that answer, I actually think it's the correct answer. I do think that Elizabeth died in or before 1983. And again, yeah, he, he's perfectly right in saying this because 
of the mangle in the sister's room. I don't know why it was there still. I don't know why it would be there if the sister was alive in the first place. I actually think the sister could have died before the crying child's death. I actually don't know which way around it is, but it, I think it could be before the bite of 83. But hey, that's just up to suggestion or up to debate or whatever you think. When it comes to Fall Fest 83, we've got a pretty consistent Halloween theme. From the Fredbear's Family Diner decorations, to the Spookfest poster, to the entirety of Curse of Dreadbear, Halloween is clearly important to FNAF. It just so happens that in the trilogy series, Charlotte Emily was kidnapped at a Fredbear's Family Diner Halloween party on the night of October 31st, 1982 or 1983. October 31st, 1982 or 1983. Okay, okay. So is he going to say that the bite of 83 was in, it was during Halloween? Because that is one thing, right? We we haven't actually, like, we, we've got a date for the MCI, right? And we always debate the year of the MCI and stuff, but it's the other way around for the bite of 83. We know the year, it's obviously 1983, but what's the date of, of the bite of 1983? And actually, I have no idea. Is he going to say that it's Halloween? I feel like that could work, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's just see what he says. Something that I stated earlier was how in the FNAF 4 Halloween update, Fredbear's Family Diner gets decked out in Halloween decorations to go with the DLC. Interesting that Fredbear's would be pictured as having Halloween parties in the game universe when we know that they do the same thing in the trilogy universe. Interesting, yeah. Now, while it's possible, and despite some of this, I don't think that Charlotte was murdered at Fredbear's Family Diner, but rather Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. To me, the most compelling piece of evidence for Charlotte dying at Freddy's is the Take Cake Freddy Sprite, who doesn't match Fredbear's purple and gold color scheme. I assume that this is just pre-withered Freddy, since Golden Freddy is commonly pictured with golden fur and a black or brown hat, like in Stage 01. I also completely agree with him here. Um... I've always believed this as well. I don't know why people have said uh, that Charlotte's death takes place at Freddy Fazbear's diner. Um, that just doesn't make any sense to me. For me, Charlotte's death was actually after um, the MCI. So I don't know, yeah, what, I don't know what you guys think about that. I think the reason that people believe this is Fredbear's family diner is just because of how small the box is. That's not viable evidence. Uh, for that and I and the puppet wasn't really around at the same time as Fred Bear's family diner was or at least I don't think it was more evidence I have is actually the take cake to the children Freddy um, is actually the same Freddy as in uh, Pizzeria simulator in like the first uh, mini game part um, before the actual like horror part of the game um, and so you can say that it is more of a pizzeria rather than a diner. That's very loose evidence, but it kind of works. And that's that's just why I believe the same as underscore here. I, I don't think it's Fred Bears. I think it is Freddy's, yes. First of all, a theory that's been around for quite a while is the idea that the FNAF 6 pizzeria is the same location as the original Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, which was left to rot and then became the 1993 location. Yes! Yes, it is. It totally is. It has to be. Now, one thing that I've always said ever since the beginning is that puppet minigame in FNAF 6 where the puppet, the security puppet comes out and sees Charlotte um, like dead on the road with the rain and all of the posters and stuff, the missing posters uh, and, and like the bins and stuff. That's the same alleyway as the alleyway where all of the scrap animatronics are found. Oh my god, it, it, it's a theory that I've had for ages, but I don't think anybody else sees it. I don't think anybody else honestly sees it. And I think it is such a good theory and one that needs to be addressed more. Similarities between these two alleyways include posters, garbage cans, garbage bags, and the importance these two places that. hold in FNAF 6. 
Although it's not too important to the story, if these alleyways are one and the same, then the posters hung up on the walls may be the very same ones pinned up in 1983. I also want to say right there that that poster in the top right corner, and I'll put it on the screen uh, big, uh, of the puppet is really strangely put up there. I know it's in the same screenshot as Lefty, uh, which holds the puppet, but it's really strange that there's just a random poster of the puppet in FNAF 6, where the puppet isn't like an animatronic there or anything. So I think the explanation for that is that it connects to the puppet minigame. Um, and it could it could be a poster with agony on it. I uh, don't <laughs> know, I don't know. I don't know about the theory, but either way. Uh, I think underscore is totally right here. That or Fallfest and Spookfest continue to this day, which seems a little more likely since we see a circus in the background of the Fury's Rage FNAF 6 stage. Oh! Now, while we're on the topic of the posters, ah. a Halloween yeah. party isn't the only connection between the novel and game series. Something I've yet to mention is the quite prominent Legend of the Terrible Man-Wolf poster, which is an obvious reference to the wolf from the Twisted right. Ones. If these posters are symbolically important, then Fallfist 83 and the novel trilogy have a lot more in common than meets the eye. Now, just to cap this all off, it's time to bring up the gameplay side of FNAF 4's Halloween DLC. As we all know, Scott stated that the Nightmare Balloon Boy animatronic was the only canon animatronic from the DLC, though that doesn't mean the others can't hold some importance. What I'm getting at is that with all this talk of Charlotte being important to Fallfest 83, Nightmarian ends up being the primary antagonist to a Halloween DLC of all things. That's a lot of very specific details that line up surprisingly oh, yeah. well. Yeah, definitely. Now, I'm not saying that Nightmarian is canon to FNAF 4 in any way, though Nightmarian's role in FNAF 4's Halloween DLC and Charlotte's death at a Halloween themed party do make me a bit suspicious. In fact, this idea that Fallfest-related content serves to parallel characters and events from 1983 works well with an old theory from FNAF VR in which Dreadbear, that game's primary DLC antagonist, actually parallels the Crying Child in the Bite of 83. Okay, so this is actually ah, a yeah, pre-editing afterthought, that. but I've just discovered that Fredbear's garbled dialogue from Ultimate Custom Night is actually in the Danger Keep Out office levels of the Curse of Dreadbear DLC, and can apparently be heard while playing the levels. Yo, really? Okay. So that's, that's, that's really cool, actually. That's a really cool Easter egg. Hmm. Okay, okay, let, let's see what, how, how much further he takes this. And besides, this discovery makes me a lot more interested in what else might be hidden in the Curse of Dreadbear. Perhaps this will come in more handy for a future theory. Just to sum all that up, since this video has been more of an information and connection dump than an actual structured theory, Fallfest related content represents and parallels events and characters that took place in 1983. Huh. I'm also fairly certain that Charlotte Emily was killed at a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Halloween party on October 31st, 1983. How that will come into importance will be seen in future theories. Okay, that was a very, very good video. Um, again, he, he didn't, yeah, he didn't pre present, like, a theory video. Um, it was more of a dump of just information and, and a little bit about how Full Fest could fit into the entire story, because I haven't really thought about how it could yet. Um, and honestly, I didn't think there was a way it could, but he is very, yeah, he, I, I really like that theory about, um... Things like things like Charlotte Emily, um, kind of the similarities between the Silver Eyes and Charlotte, uh, and dying on Halloween in 1983. I really like that. I really like that theory. Um, and and the fact that Full Fest is like parallels, I guess, to to the deaths. Um, yeah, I I like that. Cause I've never really thought about any of that before. And, and that's just given me a, a bigger, a bigger, it's given me some more thoughts. <laughs>
So guys, if you did enjoy this video, then make sure you go and subscribe to underscore. Um, his content is amazing and uh, we might be making some content together soon. Possibly, I don't know, I don't know, maybe. maybe. Uh, <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel too because we are so close to 10,000 subscribers. Get me there. Get me there before the summer. Get me there before July and uh, I'll have to make a full timeline video. And I don't want to do that. So just subscribe and then I'll have to do it and then I'll be in pain for like a few months working out the FNAF timeline. Anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> oh, what was that video, man? What is that video?